Windows Server 2012 Storage Spaces. Hello everyone, welcome to the first part of the video series that covers in and out of storage spaces. In this demo, I'm going to talk about storage spaces. Why would small businesses love it? Its benefits, its limitations, its performance, and some other things that you should be knowing about it. So Windows Server 2012 introduces many new storage features. These new features are designed to provide enhanced reliability, availability, and performance at every layer of the Microsoft Storage stack. It allows IT professionals to combine features to build a powerful new storage solution such as the ability to deliver feature-rich high-performance storage functionality and performance without sacrificing the budget. In this demo, we are going to cover one of the features of Windows Server 2012 storage. It is called Storage Spaces which is designed to deliver a cost-effective storage solution. So in this module, I'm going to explain how with Windows Server 2012, you now have the ability to virtualize your storage solutions with storage spaces. I'll also explain in detail how storage spaces gives you the ability to consolidate all your SATA or SAS connected disks. No matter whether they are SSDs or traditional HDDs. And we are going to consolidate them together as storage pools. We'll also cover the unified interface that provides a single mechanism through which you can manage all storage including non-Microsoft intelligent storage subsystems as well as virtualized local storage. So before I begin, let me put a word of disclaimer. Storage spaces, it, it provides fault tolerance, but it is always recommended that you use a hardware fault tolerance in an enterprise storage solution because storage spaces is more suitable for small businesses. What is storage spaces? So storage spaces is a collection of disks which are consolidated into a disk pool. So you can see here we have a J board which is just a bunch of disks and we have few disks in it. So I have 10 disks now what I can do with those 10 disks is that I can create a storage pool and when the when a disk pool is created you can create logical storage volumes on top of the disk pool. So in this case I have 10 disks so I've created a storage pool and on top of it I've created storage two storage spaces so storage space is nothing but a virtual disk and on top of that you can create logical volumes you can format them and you can assign a drive letter so that it will be mounted in Windows you know the disks in the pool it can be a USB attached external disk as well or just large JBODs containing many different disks why would small business users love storage spaces? So when you're starting or running a small business, one question you might ask yourself is, how do I store data in a flexible, reliable, and affordable way? Maybe you just went through the pain of replacing a small disk with a larger one, which might not be flexible enough for you. Maybe you are 
little concerned with the critical data stored on an old disk, which might not be reliable enough. Maybe you are looking at different solution that might offer similar benefits, but it might eat up your next year's IT budget. It might not be affordable for you. With these challenges, a small business can easily adopt the storage spaces of Windows Server 2012. Benefits of storage spaces. First, it's flexible. So you can add disks of any kind or size into a storage pool and then create one large virtual disks. Later on, when your business and data grows, you can add more disks to seamlessly expand the storage capacity. You can see here, I can have a maximum of 12 physical disks in this JBOD. I can add another two physical disks if needed. I can add them to the JBOD as well as to the existing storage pool. The second benefit is that it's reliable. You can select the desired level of resiliency when creating your virtual disks such as mirroring or parity. For example, with at least two copies of the data being available on at least two different physical disks. So you gain business continuity even when one of the physical disk fails. For example, let's say I'll create a storage pool using these first three physical disks. So if one of the hard drive fails, then depending on the resiliency that we have configured, whether it's mirrored or parity, the data on the disks can still be accessed without any downtime. The third benefit of storage spaces is it's affordable. So you can utilize simple inexpensive storage with or without external storage. So what it means that you know you don't have to buy another storage solution. Now you no need to purchase special hardware controllers, enclosures or drives and you don't have to retire or abandon old hard drives so you can simply use them into one of these JBOTs and you can add them to the storage pool. Other benefits are you know you can consolidate multiple drives into one or more storage pools and it can be managed as a single entity and also you can provision storage as needed from pools of storage that you have created. What it means, you know, let's say I have 10 disks in the storage pool. Each disk is of 1 GB in size. So I get 10 GB of size for the storage pool. Let's say I create these two storage pools, I'm sorry, two storage spaces. Each storage space is 2 GB in size so 2 plus 2 will be 4 GB so I still have 6 GB left so what I can do is I can create another storage space using that 6 GB of free space. Another benefit is you can have BitLocker encryption on storage spaces. There are a few more benefits of storage spaces. Uh, you can grow storage pools on demand Let's say if I have uh, additional disks which are unused, I can consolidate them together and create another storage pool. You can also use PowerShell to manage storage spaces for Windows 8 clients or Windows Server 2012. If you have one or more storage pools, you can delegate administration by specific pool. You can also use diverse types of storage in the same pool such as SATA, SAS, USB, SCSI. You can 
also use existing tools for backup or restore as well as VSS for snapshots. So you don't have to use any special tools for backup and restore. You can designate specific drives as hot spares. What it means, let's say I create a storage pool using the first three physical disks and I'll use the third physical disk as a hot spare. So if one of the first two physical drives, if they go bad, then the third disk can be used as a spare. So it'll automatically become active. In the same way, you know, you can automatically repair for pools containing hard spares with sufficient storage capacity to what was lost. Management can be local, remote, through MMC or PowerShell. Be aware of one thing. You can use storage spaces with failover clusters. However, with clusters, you are limited to SAS-only drives as a storage medium. Failover clustering does not support storage spaces using other storage technologies, so it only supports SAS drives. All right, let us talk about the limitations of storage spaces. You cannot use storage spaces to boot an operating system or to install an operating system and your storage spaces physical drives must be 4 GB or larger what it means if you want to add an additional disk into an existing pool or if you want to create a new pool the physical drives must be 4 GB or larger in size you cannot use fiber channel or iSCSI drives for storage spaces. So only direct attached storage such as SAS, SATA or USB drives are supported for storage spaces. Right, there are some things that you need to know about uh, storage spaces. So when you introduce a drive into a storage pool the contents of the drive being added will be lost. So you got to be careful that you don't have anything in the drive. If you have some data in the drive, then it should be backed up before you add that disk into a storage pool. And so a mirrored pool must have at least two drives, which is called as two-way mirroring. And for three-way mirroring, Obviously, you need to have one more drive. You can use parity if you have three drives, which is the minimum. All drives in a pool must use the same sector size. Storage must be store port .sys compatible. And if you're going to use a virtual disk and a failover cluster, and if that virtual disk is provisioned from a storage pool, the virtual disk should be formatted in NTFS file system. REFS or third-party file system may be used for other purpose. Disk resiliency. Storage spaces supports three types of disk resiliency. They are simple, mirror, Parity. In simple type of disk resiliency, the data is striped across disks, maximizing capacity and throughput, but increasing reliability. Let's say I have 12 physical disks, each of 1 GB, so I get maximum capacity that is all 12 GB in size. Next is mirror. In mirror type of disk resiliency, data will be mirrored across two or three disks. It improves reliability, but it decreases capacity. So let's say I have two physical disks, one GB each, 
I get only 1 GB of space so it reduces capacity. Parity. In parity type of disk resiliency data will be striped with parity information across all disks so it reduces capacity but it also improves reliability so this allows up to two disks to fail at the same time without losing information when the disks are replaced they'll be brought back into the pool and have the data written on them so let's say we'll use the first three disks and we'll create a parity type of disk resiliency so if two disks if they fail at the same time we are not going to lose any information when they brought back into the pool we'll have the data written back to them performance of storage spaces now performance of, of storage spaces depends on the performance capabilities of the storage itself that you use in a storage pool. You know, just because USB is a supported storage type for storage spaces and if you use it in a combination with other types of faster storage technology, it doesn't increase the performance of a storage space or pool. So if I have three SATA drives and three SAS drives and three USB drives, it's not going to increase the performance of storage space pool because you are using external USB drives and obviously USBs are slower than any other storage type. Okay, this concludes the first part of the video series that covers in and out of storage spaces. In the second part, I'm going to show you how you can create a storage pool on a standalone server. Thanks for watching the video and for more videos, please subscribe to my channel.